One of the things that intrigued me during my initial playthrough of the second Evil Within game were the fates of Mobius' own Alpha Team, who had been sent into the STEM system on a mission similar to Sebastian's, to find the core and fix the issues occurring in Union. Kidman even mentions that they could be of use to us as we enter the system, and several of them do end up being quite important to our journey. However, that being said, not all of the members' fates are as spelled out for us, and if you're like me, you may forget what happened to a few of them. So I thought today we'd take a look at Alpha Team and recount their harrowing adventures inside of the STEM system. There are photos of a bunch of Mobius agents here. Your lost team, I assume. That's them. Let us know if you locate any of them. You're our only line of communication into STEM. They're stuck in Union and searching for Lily too. Union? So first, let's talk about the general circumstances of what happened to Alpha Team once they were inside of the world of STEM. According to Liam O'Neill, when Alpha Team entered into the STEM system, they attempted to use the stable field emitter to temporarily stabilize Union while they searched for the core. They also met with a team of Mobius security who were sent in a bit before them and were to essentially serve as bodyguards during their search. Harrison and a bulk of the security detail were sent to Union City Hall to set up the stable field emitter, while the other members went off in search of the core. Unfortunately, shortly after Harrison departed, the other members of Alpha Team were attacked and separated in the ensuing chaos. Liam ended up with the Alpha Team captain, William Baker, and as for the other members of the team, their paths are a little bit less clear. It would seem that Sykes and Hoffman ended up alone, while Harrison continued his mission to City Hall. Baker locked onto a powerful signal and wanted to investigate. O'Neill, on the other hand, wouldn't hear of it, wanting to find a safe place to hunker down and wait for extraction. However, Baker was persistent and left the technician to search out the signal on his own, fully separating the final cohesive unit of the force. The signal that Baker followed led him to an apartment block in the town, and it was here that he found Stefano Valentini, a deranged photographer who was searching for the power of the core. Valentini made short work of the lone captain, immortalizing him as one of his artworks, capturing the exact moment when he ended Baker's life. That's one of the search team, Baker. As for Liam, he and the surviving member of the security detail that accompanied him searched for a safe house to wait out the chaos, eventually finding one near the Union Visitor Center. As they approached, however, they were overrun by the lost, and the member of the security fell as Liam fled to the safety of the building. Hoffman entered the Marrow, finding her own safe house to wait out the storm. Sykes also managed to carve out his own piece of Union, finding a safe house near Union's theater as he made plans for his own escape. As for Harrison, he continued on with his mission finding a way to the city building with a large number of the security detail at his back. Unfortunately, Harrison and his detail wouldn't find much success, meeting with the forces of the same man who had taken out the team leader William Baker not long before. Mobius's security were slaughtered, their bodies strewn all around the grounds of the city hall building, some killed by Stefano's living artworks, and some becoming artworks themselves. Harrison was no exception, dealt a mortal blow during the altercation, finding his way to the entrance of the building before his injuries became too severe to carry on. Who's there? It's okay. Harrison, right? I'm not one of them. Uh, who are you? Don't worry. O'Neill sent me. I... I thought I was the only one left. I'm looking for the core. Where is she? Is she here? Harrison died on his mission, leaving only three remaining members of Alpha Team, each of which had found their own secure building to evade the relentless attacks of the Lost. Hoffman delved into research, attempting to find out how all of this could have happened on her watch. Liam cowered alone in his house, too afraid to make a move, with hopes that Mobius would come and rescue him and Sykes began to formulate his own plan to escape this living hell and return to the real world via a back exit. 
Each of the three remaining members of Alpha Team were trapped in their own way, until a new stranger entered into the STEM system, a stranger named Sebastian Castellanos. These three remaining members of Alpha Team are the three that we meet in the game, with Hoffman and O'Neill having an important role to play in Sebastian's main journey, while Sykes is regulated to one of the game's side missions. Since you probably know the fates of O'Neill and Hoffman, I'll just touch on them briefly. O'Neill helps Sebastian initially, before letting his fear get the best of him, and allows himself to be controlled by Father Theodore a Mobius higher-up who had entered into the STEM system to aid with Lily's rescue effort, but ended up stabbing Myra in the back. As for Hoffman, she aids Sebastian with information at first, and follows O'Neill to a forbidden area of the Marrow, where she reunites with her former comrade, only to find out that he's been drastically altered thanks to Father Theodore. She attempts to talk some sense into him, but fails, leaving Sebastian to deal with a delusional O'Neill. Once the technician has been dealt with, Hoffman helps Sebastian by finishing Liam's portable stable field emitter and helping him find a way to Father Theodore, a task which kills her in the end. Julian Sykes' side mission and his subsequent fate is easily the most up in the air out of any of the other members of Alpha Team. Sykes leaves the security of his safe house to find his back exit, but gets overwhelmed by Lost almost immediately. Luckily, Sebastian happens to be passing through and aids the Mobius operative, who offers the former detective a proposition help him get out of STEM, and in return he will open all of the locked weapon caches hidden around Union. If Sebastian does end up aiding Sykes, the mission will take you to the Marrow, where Sykes will exit the system via an emergency exit that Mobius was workshopping. This exit does seemingly work, with Sykes leaving the world of Union, evaporating into nothingness after the system boots up. Unfortunately, given the information that we later learn, his chances of actual escape are a bit improbable. Sykes vanishes from the room, but that doesn't mean that he returned to the real world, with a voice recording telling us that he has a 1 in 4 chance of escape, with a 75% chance that he will become trapped even deeper in the STEM system, a dream within a dream. Our attempt to use a STEM pod as an emergency exit port has been declared a failure. Despite a 25% success rate, the decision has been made to discontinue research. One in four test subjects made the trip back successfully. The other three simply... ceased to be. We believe that the other 75% have been lost in an uncharted sublevel of STEM. A dream within a dream. However, assuming that Sykes did escape the system and got back to the real world without issue, falling into the 25% of people that were lucky enough to find use in the emergency exit, it's still unlikely that he survived, given the Mobius protocol of implanting chips in their employees' heads when Myra took on the power of the core and used that power to compromise the chips, everyone with them died. Meaning that, in all likelihood, even if Sykes survived the initial emergency exit, he died when Myra compromised the chips. Meaning that Sykes would have had to got lucky enough to win a 1 in 4 bet, and then almost immediately remove the chip in his head. An outcome which seems rather unlikely, but still possible, making Sykes the only potential survivor out of the unfortunate five who made up Mobius's alpha team. So what happens if you get out of Union? If I can make it out of the Mobius building alive, first thing I'm gonna do is disable my damn chip. Chip? Yeah. Everybody in Mobius has got a subdermal chip in their head. Sort of like an RFID, but way more advanced. And I mean everybody. From the administrator all the way down to the guy who cleans the toilets. And you submit to that willingly? Like they say...